She is considered by many to be a modern day saint, a symbol of courage, the embodiment of the struggle for democracy. But as she competes for power in the bruising world of Burmese politics, some say her reputation for moral leadership has slipped. The daughter of the country's founder, Aung San, she was locked up for 15 years by the military junta. She was released in 2010 amid promises of democratic reform, and Ms. Suu Kyi and her party, the NLD, are overwhelming favorites to win elections later this year. But there are concerns the military establishment will rig the poll. You will lead the NLD into national elections in November. How crucial do you think this moment is? It is very important. Let's hope, to begin with, that uh, we get to the elections without any, uh, any problems. Do you think the election will be free and fair? I don't know whether the elections will be free and fair because we had found uh, in when we examined the voter list in 10 townships that there were terrible, terrible mistakes. Up to about 80% uh, of the information was incorrect. So with regard to voters, one has to wonder, can even the voter lists be prepared correctly and uh, satisfactorily within the time that's left to us before the elections? Whether the government is guilty of poor administration or deliberately trying to disenfranchise voters, she declined to say. But if the poll is fair, the NLD should form the largest party in parliament, where the 69-year-old holds a seat. But she can't serve as president. Ms. Su Chi is barred by the constitution because her children are foreign nationals. And the current military-backed administration is stalling on a rewrite. I understand that there has been one substantive meeting about constitutional change over the course of two years. If you're talking about the six-way talks, uh, we really didn't get around to talking very much about constitutional change. We were, there were discussions about how far the tables were from uh, one another and so on and so forth. Is that frustrating? Frustration is not something that we can indulge in. There are other matters that demand the attention of Burmese politicians, like the dramatic rise of Buddhist nationalism, an outpouring of hate speech and violence directed largely at the Muslim Rohingya. In a recent video posted online, one extremist urges people to shoot them. Do you accept that there has been a failure by all political leaders in this country to challenge and confront some of these extremists? I don't know what you mean by challenging and confronting. It's a very, very complex problem, as you probably know. And uh, certainly a lot of uh, extremists have been allowed to go, go their extremist way without the government taking action. That this is why the NLD has repeatedly said that rule of law is so important, that action must be taken. We watched a, a video, it was recently uh, recorded, of a man addressing a, a crowd. He was saying, uh, shoot the Rohingya, shoot the Rohingya. And this person apparently is out and about at large in Burma. That doesn't seem well, acceptable. But absolutely, and there the are people going around saying almost the same thing about me. Just about a month or so ago, uh, at a meeting, there, were, there, were, there was a um, um, Catholic priest and a Muslim Malvi, and there were some Buddhist monks as well. And of course, I greeted the, the, the priest, the Malvi, and then I uh, did this to the monks that side. But they took a photograph, cut out the monks, and put the photograph on the, on the internet and said that I was uh, making uh, making obeisance to the Muslims. Being seen as pro-Muslim is an electoral liability, something Miss Su Chi clearly grasps. And that explains, say her critics, her approach to the Rohingya. 120,000 are held in squalid camps after they were burnt out of their homes. You have been widely criticized for not condemning the persecution 
suffered by the Rohingya. I'm wondering what your response to those but criticisms are. I have condemned are. Uh, persecution. I've always condemned uh, violation of human rights or persecution by the government of ordinary people, by individuals against one another. I've always, I've always condemned that. But perhaps I don't use the kind of, kind of um, pyrotechnic language that people would like. Would you shut down the, the camps, the internment camps? You can't shut down internment camps without making alternative arrangements. People say, shut down the camps, and where are those people going to go to? The story of the Nobel laureate's last few years in public life is one of incremental change, not revolution, and hard-nosed politics in a troubled land. I wonder whether things have worked out the way you expected them to. Certainly things have worked out better in some ways and not so well in others. For example, with regard to our hopes for genuine negotiations with the government, this, uh, there, there has been disappointment. But uh, with the amount of work that we managed to um, get through in the legislature, that has been a good surprise, a pleasant surprise.